Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more FIFA 16 career mode. We're playing as Juventus. This is Season 1, Episode 2. Now guys, in today's episode, we have two matches. The first of which is an away match against Roma. Pjanic is facing his former side. And we also have an away match against Napoli. So both top sides pushing for Champions League football. And, of course, um, yeah, we need to pick up the three points and get into a good position in the Italian league. But, guys, if you haven't gone and watched the last episode, you won't know that we managed to sign Pjanic, Dani Alves, Domenico Berardi, and uh, we also managed to sign Gabi Adini in today's episode. But uh, Roma are playing a 4-3-3 um, defensive, I guess. Strutman, De Rossi, El Sharari in the midfield, but Berardi on the ball. My God, what a player he is becoming. And as you see here, I'm going to be playing him in the starting 11. And uh, look at him go. Berardi makes it 1-0 just before the 6th. Starts off the play with a through ball. And if you haven't gone and watched the last episode, my God, he is going to be the fan favorite of the series. I kind of expected Kingsley Coleman to be this, but Berardi has scored two goals on his debut and a, an assist. There was a superb piece of play, a superb, skillful um, display in the first episode with a nice little chip over the top to one. Cadrado plays it back, but Berardi determined and pushes through there, hits the crossbar, slam shut, and he scored three goals and picked up one assist in this season. So far, and I really can't wait to see how his uh, career progresses. Where's Pogba? Where's Dabala? Where is Marco Verratti? It's currently the Berardi show going on at uh, Roma. But Pjanic, 26 yards out, away at Rome against his former side, just before the 27th minute. Oh God, he makes it 2-0 and celebrates in front of his former fans with a nice fist Straight up to the sky, and uh, it's currently 2-0. Pjanic is so, so good on free kicks. He's got like 90 free kicks in FIFA, and in real life, he's got some incredible stats, but, but uh, Pjanic steps up and uh, scores his second of the ski season. He actually scored the first goal for this Juventus career mode, and uh, Florenzi picking up a yellow card here just before the 45th. 36 yards out, Pjanic is going to step up again. 36 yards out, can he make it 3-0? Score his second free kick of the match past Chesney. We'll just have to see. Pjanic absolutely thumps it, but by the smallest of margins, Chesney manages to get a glove up on the end of it, and Murata, being a little bit ambitious, finds Paul Pogba at the back post, even though it was a shot, but De Rossi manages to eventually find his way to El Shuari, and uh, on a counter-attack here, Paul Pogba finds Dabala breaking away here. The Argentine... Whips it over the top to Morata, and what a sensational piece of play from the Spaniard and the Argentine. Morata and Dybala link up for the first time this season, and I'm hoping it's not the last, if I'm being honest. Morata and Dybala leading the line, even though they are quite young, but... You shouldn't really hold that against them. In today's episode, we also have the August transfer deadline day. So let me know in the comments, players you'd like me to sign in January, because that's when the next window is coming up. Berardi plays through Dybala, determined to claim an assist. But so we managed to win 3-0 over Roma. A lot of narratives going through this match. Obviously, Berardi on fire, determined to stake his claim at Juventus. Obviously, in real life, um, Juventus owned, obviously, a portion of him. Uh, going back and forth on loan from Sassuolo. Never got a senior match for Juventus. But uh, could very well come back and play. Obviously, obviously Pjanic uh, scoring against his former side in a, a free kick manner, no less. We're going to be loaning out Martin here, 28 years of age, 80 overall. He's actually been sold by Juventus in real life. Uh, Zaza, 24 years of age, 80 overall, was going on loan to um, Valencia. We're going to be putting a bid in for Gabi Adini, 23 years of age, is a cam. And we're also currently negotiating with Felipe Anderson, 22 years of age, plays for Lazio. He is a Brazilian. And we're also going to be going for De Stiglio. Now, I've decided to loan out Zaza simply because we just can't fit him into the side. We already have Morata and Dabala leading the line, who are going to be my first team preference. We've also got Mandzukic on the bench, who you guys can't remember. We've got a lot of quality players in this Juventus side, and we simply 
don't have um, free positions in the starting 11. It's going to be very, very close, but that's not a bad thing. A lot of players trying to stake their claim, but a huge transfer has gone through. Thomas Muller has left uh, Bayern Munich to join um, Manchester City. And also, Botang, Jerome Botang, has left by Munich to join Barcelona. But we're currently negotiating here with Lazio, Napoli, and Milan. But we obviously go and sign Gabi Adini. I was so, so close to sign Felipe Anderson. Um, it was a very, very close decision. But Gabi Adini, my God, is a career mode legend, a, an old school career mode signing. Um, I remember signing him back in the day in like FIFA 12, FIFA 13. He was so, so good, um, so young can play as a striker and a cam, and funnily enough, actually played for Juventus at some point in his senior career, played a fair few matches and scored a fair few goals before being uh, sold on, currently at Napoli in this season. Funnily enough, we have a match against Napoli later on in the episode, but Gabi Adini is going to be strengthening my midfield, whether or not we get much first-team game games with him. Um, we'll just have to see. But he's 23 years of age. I'm sure he's going to be making back his 18.5 bid at some point. But Lazio have accepted the deal. And uh, we seriously don't have the funds to accept Felipe Anderson's wage demand, 140000 But uh, um, AC Milan have accepted the offer for De Stiglio. And uh, we're coming to the dying hours of the window. Liverpool sign Edison Cavani for 52.5 million. A pretty good signing, if I do say so myself, a former Napoli player. I love how all this sort of links up somehow. <laughs> Currently negotiating with Napoli to get the, the wages. We've already uh, Napoli have already accepted the offer of 18.5 million. We just need to negotiate uh, Gabby Adini's personal terms. He's going to have a five-year contract. Two, uh, sorry, twenty percent per goal, which doesn't mean anything in career mode. You're better. You're always better off doing it. But uh, Felipe Anderson, twenty-two million. We'll go past another hour and see if Gabby Adini signs his wage contract uh, within the within the sixth and the fifth hour. Um, but a couple of pretty big signings going through. Edison Cavani to Liverpool. That's a pretty good buy, 52 million. I reckon PSG could have gotten a lot more for him. We managed to sell my Edison Cavani in the PSG career mode for something like 88, 89 million or something insane. Nearly double what Liverpool just um, bought him for. But we're coming to the uh, the dying, the final hours of the window. Two hours remaining Chelsea look like to get uh, Godin, but Gabbiadini has signed 18 million, or we can get um, Felipe Anderson or Distigli. So it's a pretty close choice. I was umming and ahhing whether or not to go with Gabbiadini or Felipe Anderson, but simply because um, I went with Gabbiadini because he was an old school career mode player. I have played with him before. I've never played with Anderson, and also Gabbiadini has actually played for Juventus. So even though probably it was a better deal to go with Felipe Anderson, I simply went for, I played with uh, Gabby Adini before and obviously was a former Juventus player. So it's probably a little bit of less risk. But Gabby Adini, 23 years of age, has some really, really nice stats. 78 overall. Uh, let's have a look at his skill moves and weak foot he's got. Three star or weak foot, three star skills. I'm pretty sure he had five star skills in one FIFA and uh, definitely had four star weak foot. But can play as a striker, can play as a cam. He's got a cracking left foot on him and he looks really good in this Juventus kit. Really love the, the goatee, I guess, on him. He's going to be getting number seven. I don't particularly care about numbers, if I'm being honest. It's just a waste of time allocating because it, it really does mean nothing at the, at the end of the day. But uh, we're going to be going through the starting 11. This is the official team that I'm going to be playing with this season. Throughout, we're going to be playing the 3-5-2. The window has slammed shut. We're going to be playing a 3-5-2, like I said. Murata Dybala leading the line. Paul Pogba at the cam. Berardi, Pjanic, Marquisio, Alves, the BBC in the back line. Benucci, Barzagli, Chiellini, and Buffon in goal. None of this Benzema, Bale, and uh, uh, Cristiano bullshit. This is the real BBC. My God, they've been playing so well for Italy in the Euros in real life. Now, Dani Alves is playing right Midfielder, he is going to be my right winger. And I'm going to explain that 
basically, in football manager terms, I'm going to be playing him as a defensive winger. He's going to be tracking back a lot for. I'm going to be very cautious with pushing forward, but Danny Alves has some attacking quality. So if someone in the comments says, why is Simpsy playing um, Danny Alves as a right midfielder? I basically don't want to play a four at the back. I'm happy with the three the um, the three at the back. Bonucci, Barzagli, Chiellini. I don't want to break that up. And uh, basically, at some points throughout this season and in this match, Danny Alves is going to be playing... Uh, Basically, we're going to be playing four at the back. He's going to be tracking back a lot for a defensive winger, and I really can't wait to uh, show how he does on that right-hand side. Very much like Patrice Evra in real life playing on that left-hand side, but unfortunately, we can't quite get Patrice Evra in the team because Domenico Berardi is absolutely dominating it. But uh, Napoli have a really good side. He's actually been to Napoli in real life. It's a, a lovely city. Went to Pompeii when I was there, but Paul Pogba makes it 1-0 just before the 22nd. I've actually been... a to all pretty much all the major Italian cities when I went on my European gap year. Um, on Instagram, there's a lot of photos of that if you're interested. But Paul Pogba makes it his first goal of the season. And it honestly it took him a while to get running, but uh, he definitely shines in this match. Morata plays through Danny Alves, breaking away, plays it back to Morata. Danny Alves shoots. But I unfortunately couldn't put in the back of that. Dabala puts in a cutting ball to Paul Pogba. Gets the dip down. And it's 2-0 just before the 45th. Will, Pogba, uh, will Paul Pogba get his uh, hat-trick? His first hat-trick of the season. You just have to see. But we're 2-0 up at halftime. Pogba plays it back to Pjanic. Pjanic on the ball finds Dabala. The Argentine gets tackled in the box. Controversial, but on the counter-attack here. Paul Pogba breaking away. Plays it over the top to Dabala. And couldn't put it past Pepe Reina. Very unlucky. But Patrice Evra, fresh off the bench, makes it 3-0 with an absolute screamer. My God. The Frenchman makes it 3-0. I can still remember to this day his absolute fucking screamer in real life against Bayern Munich uh, in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And I remember was, was gobsmacked as to how he hit that ball. If you haven't gone and seen Patrice Evra's goal against Bayern Munich, it's an absolute belter. I was gobsmacked when he did it. And then Mandzukic and Bayern Munich went up the other room. We ended up losing anyway. But it's our Paul Pogba tackled in the box in the 90th minute. Two minutes remaining. And uh, simply because Paul Pogba is on a hat-trick, we're 3-0 up. If he misses, it doesn't matter. Will Paul Pogba claim his first hat-trick of the season? Pjanic has 79 uh, penalties. And Pogba has 76, so Pjanic is the better. But Paul Pogba steps up for the hat-trick. He smashes it past Pepe Reina. He goes the right side, and uh, he got the height and elevation on the penalty and claimed his first hat-trick of the season. Scored his first goal in this match, and then his first hat-trick claimed three goals uh, this season so far. So uh, it took a little while for Paul Pogba to get going, but he definitely showed why he's uh, worth what he's worth. It's a correct valuation, I think. But the two Frenchmen link up, of course, in this match. A 4-0 victory over Napoli. Um, Paul Pogba picking up the hat-trick and Patrice Ever with the other goal. But guys, it is time to end the video here. If you haven't already hit that like button and subscribed, I'd really much appreciate, appreciate it. Also, check out my social media links, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Hopefully, you have been enjoying the Juventus career mode. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot more episodes and season one coming up. So stay tuned for more content on my channel. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simsy. Goodbye. Take care.